Look how darn cool that is. Something that is so simple yet can transform the interior of your Saab. I cannot believe that's a one year only option, but you too can do the exact same modification with some simple tools in a little bit of time. Hello, my Saab friends. My name is Gary, and this is my channel, Weakest of Weeks. If you're a first time viewer, I definitely appreciate you clicking on the video and certainly consider subscribing. I have a ton of how-to stuff out there and especially Saab related ones. Today, it's another fun-filled Saab how-to with my daily driver, my 08 Laser Red Saab 93 Aero. And today, we are focusing on the ISM, the ignition switch module, what exactly the key goes into. Mine is currently sticking. It's still somewhat functioning, but today, believe it or not, there is a way to upgrade your ISM in your new gen Saab 93. That's 2003 to 2011 slash 2012. So stay tuned. So here's what's hip hop happening with this one. When I go to start it, it's supposed to snap right back to the on position after you hit the start. Well, unfortunately it is sticking in the start portion. Of course now it doesn't do it, but just trust me, that's what it has been doing. I promise you it. And of course the one time I decide to film it, it actually works. So just hold on, let's try this again. Take two, I'm telling you it's gonna stick. Oh, it's, what is happening? All right, so apparently I'm a liar. So mine is no longer sticking, but for a while it was sticking on the start position and actually have to kind of push it back to the on position. Anyways, so this one, regardless of if it's sticking or not sticking, I'm gonna be replacing it and upgrading it anyways. Here are the tools that I'm gonna be using to complete the job. Trim removal tool, totally option, not 100% required. Same thing with a screwdriver. So the trim removal tool is gonna pretty much take place of the screwdriver, but when it comes to actually removing the ISM, pushing in those clips and especially the electrical connector on the ISM, the screwdriver is definitely gonna come in handy. And then, you know, with the trim removal tool, it's gonna be similar, just less chance of scratching things up. T25 Torx bit, and of course a 3 8 ratchet. And for starters, I'm gonna be removing my cup holder. Now this is entirely optional. It's something that I did a video on previously. I love this 3D printed cup holder, and if it's something that you're interested in, go ahead, click in the top. I did a video on this specific cup holder and the options available from the company MN Proto. But we're gonna start by popping out these cap covers. And there are a couple different options of these. You can use, say, like a screwdriver if it's a twist style. Mine, I just have the push pins, but that gives us access to the torque screws in here. Since I have this optional cup holder, I'm actually opting to use a Torx screwdriver. It's, again, a T25. That way, it gives me plenty of room because you need something very long to get in here for this optional cup holder. Now, if you have the original coin slot holder or whatever they call it, you're definitely not gonna need anything deep well whatsoever. But in this case, I am gonna cheat and use an optional T25 screwdriver. For a point of reference, this option is what's gonna be probably one of the more common versions. Yes, there was the factory Saab cup holder, rather rare. There was the versions with the slit in it. There's the solid version, which I think is more popular on the facelifted models. And of course the rare and more unique ice scraper version, but this simply lifts off like such, set that to the side, give access to the two torque screws that will lift this base plate up. And then that therefore gives you access to an additional hidden torque screw underneath here. Go ahead and remove this torque screw right here. Make sure you set all your screws to the side. This one is kind of oddly rusted, so I may actually replace this. I believe I have a couple spares laying around, but that kind of looks a little dingy. If you haven't already, lift the e-brake up, get your fingernails or your fingers underneath. Just pull towards yourself. And it releases, basically what's holding it. There's a clip there, 
clip there, clip there, holds it in there, there, and underneath there. That now exposes this torque screw that we now need to remove. Next up is the shifter trim. Obviously this is a manual transmission vehicle. Automatic will be slightly different, but a similar process. You can get a trim removal tool or even just your fingernails, push up around this ISM underneath the trim. That'll pop straight up and you'll kind of pull it back your way a little bit. And then you can easily just kind of pull off this rubber mat, set that to the side. Now I am just gonna keep this in place. I'm just gonna set it to the side. Uh, just mainly because they're on the boot inside here, there's a thin plastic retaining ring. Um, and over time it gets rather brittle, so I don't want to risk getting this boot out and breaking it. So it's not 100% necessary to remove this trim piece. Now if it's an automatic, you can easily remove the entire thing because clearly you don't have this boot here. But for instance here, just going to leave it in place. Now what this does, it will expose on the automatic transmission torque screw right here, which you'll need to remove. But because I have a manual transmission, don't have to worry about that. But also two automatic or manual, you have two additional torque screws up front there. Open up the armrest. We now need to remove this rubber piece. Removes pretty simple. Just lifts up like that, set it to the side, and that exposes the two torque screws we need to remove. Disclaimer, this is sort of my junk drawer in my vehicle, so I did clean this before I started filming. Move both your driver and passenger front seats as rearward as possible, exposing both screws on either side of the center console. Now you can lower this down and pull backwards and you can finagle it out, set it to the side. That's what it should look like. Same process on my passenger side here. We're on the driver's side of my US Spec Saab 9.3, and we're gonna creep in here ever so slightly, and this gives us access to two clips on this side. To remove this ISM, it is a giant rectangular block, so we have two on this side. We'll have to hop on the passenger side and push in those two as well, so four clips in total. So let's go ahead and push those in. This is where the screwdriver comes in handy. Also helps if you get your hand and push down from above on the ISM to keep downward pressure. Now onto the passenger side, same process as before. Get your hand on top of the ISM, keeping downward pressure. Push in the clips. All right. And the whole point of loosening all of these screws up top is that way it keeps everything as flexible as possible. So if you lift up on here, you can see now everything's real loose. So we really shouldn't have to remove any of this ductwork. And let's see, here is the clip that we'll need to remove. So we'll lift up on this and we'll try to get a better angle of how to remove that clip. Push in on this tab right here. And then there's actually a lever that you push forward and it releases this electrical clip. Here's the old one. And these things get caked with all sorts of crap. I mean, this looks pretty gross, but this is by far one of the better ones that I've ever seen. 
Here are the ISMs. Left one, original one I just pulled out. Right one, the new-ish upgraded version. And full disclaimer, that is a used one I purchased off eBay. The original one, part number 12801010. If the filth around the edge didn't give it away, this is in fact the original one. Now, comment down below if you wanna see me dismantle this, clean it and reassemble it. If you would find that video helpful, just let me know down below and I can certainly do a video on that. But here is the new-ish upgraded version. Part number 12786386. Now visually, they are identical. What is different? is internally. This one was only optioned a one year only on the new Gen 9 3s when they first started in 2003. Regardless of arc linear aero models, it came with this lighted version. So the lock off on start portions light up with the exact same green LEDs as what's in the interior. Very cool, and it actually dims down with the dimmer switch. So I imagine GM tried to cut corners. So in 2003, they thought it would be a great idea to have this switch. And then in 2004, all the way to its demise, 2011-2012, they cheapened out and went with a non-LED light-up version. I will actually link in the description below a very informative thread on a forum that I saw how to dismantle this and add in some resistors and LEDs, but that's between you and me well above my knowledge with soldering and stuff So the route I went with was sourcing a used O3 model and now it's time to put this to good use and put it in the vehicle This video is brought to you by the creaking and squeaking of a GM interior Anyways, here is the new to me ISM from the 2393 one thing to be extremely cautious about is it does have a rubberized coating around the end here and it's easily scratched up. So we definitely want to be careful whenever we finagle this thing underneath here. So how I'm going to do this is lifting up on here and then just snaking it ever so carefully down in here. And you'll want to get it to the side. That way we can easily hook up that electrical connector. ISM is on its side. Now I have the connector facing the passenger side. Here is the actual electrical connector. Lever needs to be loose. Here is what needs to go into the channel. So just kind of guide it in. And then as you close the lever, it pulls the electrical connector in. You get a nice satisfying click, give it a slight wiggle, and you're locked in. Again, lift this up, snake it in here, and line it up. Push it upwards, you get the click, push down a little bit, make sure it's not loose. Now it's just reassembly. If you have the sound deadening now that the ISM is in, we want to put this back. Notice how this stepped up notch is there. That'll actually go towards the back here. And it's not really securely in place. It just kind of sits in there. I mean, it's sound deadening. As long as it's in there, it's doing its job. Here is that long side console piece. This bolt faces towards the rear of the vehicle. Big point of mention is on the inside, the part that's going towards the pedals. On the inside, you have this big old tab here that actually slides in behind that metal bracket. So you're going to want to fish this thing in here and ensure that this is behind that metal piece. Otherwise, it's going to stick out and flop around and rattle on you. Probably hard to see, but right up in there, that black piece for the center console is in behind the metal bracket affixed to the floor of the car. Next up, you have this tab, which actually goes up underneath here. This pointer piece is the one that goes inside here. And then this flat piece, we actually need to get up underneath the lip of this for the console. I need to line up the holes. So this front piece goes over top of the back console piece. And you may or may not be able to see, but we need to kind of wiggle the back piece forward, line up the hole, shove the bolt in there, 
and we'll start it. So we're gonna wait to fully tighten this until we get the other side on and also we start to fasten this because this will need to come down and if we need to lift this up a little bit, we can adjust it, lift up and then tighten it to just kind of make some of these gaps more appealing. Need to push down, make sure these are locked in because there are metal clips in there. Now you want to use, there's two specific torque screws like this that are kind of different than the rest. So we'll go ahead and start these, one on each side of the front, and then we will fully crank these down. So I actually went back and added a washer underneath this one. This one I did not, but the reason I added a washer was up top here, there is a slight crack and it could have been like that when I removed it or maybe I just over torqued it. Honestly, I don't know, but I didn't really put a lot of force on here when I tightened it, but I'm hoping the addition of a washer kind of distributes the pressure a little more evenly. And if any vibration happens here, it's not just going to crumble. This one that was rusty when I pulled it out looked like this. I said I'd replace it. This is one that I found in my parts bin. Not perfect, but a heck of a lot better than that one. And don't forget all the crap you initially took out. Now we are good to reattach, refasten this. So I believe both the automatic and the standard transmissions, the rubber piece in this, at least the front portion are the same. Real simple, it actually just sits down in there. Go ahead and dip that down. Now there is a little notch and down in there, there is a slight hole. And we'll just push that down, and that is fastened, it's just held in with pressure. For me, up next is the cup holder that I have. If you have the coin slot holder, you just need to screw in the base with the two screws that I'm fastening now. Then the actual coin slot portion just gets pushed down, there's four clips. You should get a nice satisfying click. Once it's in place, This little piece is super awkward underneath the emergency brake lever. There are the three tabs. Now, we need to snake this in here. This tab needs to go underneath here. This tab needs to go underneath right there. Clips in like that. With this piece underneath the e-brake now in place, the last step to the puzzle here would be to lift up underneath here a little bit. That way this gets pushed up a bit so you don't have some absurd looking gap and fully tighten on both sides the bolts for that front center console piece. But here is the finalized product. I mean, it. let's be real, looks identical to the original one, but what the most important part is, Let's cut the lights and see what this thing looks like in the dark. Here's the big reveal. Currently, all the lights are off. We'll go ahead, open the door. That way, the lights turn on. You can see the initial lights, the odometer. Nothing else is on because the ignition is not turned. But look at that. The ignition is lighting up. We'll go ahead and... Turn the key to the on position. That way all the other lights turn on. I'm not gonna start the car because I am in the closed garage right now. But let's see if the dim function works. So everything 
it's pretty much dimmed. So this would almost be similar to the night panel. We'll go ahead and turn up the brightness. It is now lit up. So let's see what happens when I hit night panel. Okay, well, oh, there we go, night panel. So it's very hard to see, but it's actually dimmed down quite a bit, the ignition. That's pretty cool. So turn off night panel. And that got really bright. So I feel like the camera doesn't do the brightness justice. But man, does that look so cool. Wow, look at now everything's turned off. Look at that. Look how darn cool that is. Something that is so simple yet can transform the interior of your Saab. I cannot believe that's a one year only option, but you too can do the exact same modification with some simple tools in a little bit of time. The point I mentioned here when swapping out this ISM, you do not need a Tech 2 scanner. Your key is actually synced to the CIM in behind the steering wheel, the central integrated module, this ignition switch module, the ISM is not linked to your key. So this modification is really hassle-free because you don't need any special tools like a Tech 2. You just simply unbolt all this stuff, hook up the new ISM, and you are good to go. There you have it. That is a wrap. Such a simple modification, but something that can totally transform the interior of your new Gen 9.3. If this video helped you out, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, drop a comment down below. And also definitely consider subscribing because I have a ton of stuff out there, especially Saab-related videos. That being said, I appreciate you watching, and I'll catch your friends next time.